when you're trying to come up with best practices for your Kubernetes environment, even if it's just like from a security perspective or if it's from a literal best practices out of Kubernetes, CIS typically has you covered. Now, if you haven't heard of CIS, it's essentially a standard for server hardening or that's like kind of where it started. It was system hardening, server hardening. And now since 2017, there is a CIS benchmark for Kubernetes. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to learn how to get the report, download it, and then take a look at it. And then in the next video, we're going to look at some tools that allow you to do actual scans based on CIS benchmark. So a lot of these tools that scan like container images and stuff like that, like Kubescape, Checkoff, Aqua Security has a few tools. All of these tools, they're essentially looking at different places for best practices. So like the National Vulnerability Database, CIS, and then some that they even come up with themselves. So if you're using those tools and if you were ever wondering like, oh, where do these actual results even come from? Well, CIS, National Vulnerability Database or NVD, and a few other places. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into looking at how we can get the report and how we can actually take a look at the report. All right, so first things first, what you wanna do is just Google CIS Kubernetes benchmark. And then from here, you're gonna see the cissecurity.org website you know, click on that and then as you can see you can download the latest cis benchmark so now once you click on that really all you have to do is just put in your information here yeah it's going to collect your email address but that's okay so just go ahead and paste all that information in, and then you'll get an email now once you get that email you're going to get something that looks like this your cis benchmarks are ready to download and then you're going to click on access pdfs so now at this point, you have a bunch of different options here, and it's not just for Kubernetes, for operating systems, for Windows Desktop, Debian, all that. But what you can do is just search Kubernetes, and then as you can see here, there's a section specifically around Kubernetes. And you can even get specific benchmarks for AKS, you can get specific benchmarks for GKE, or just general Kubernetes. So let's try two of these. Number one, let's do the general Kubernetes. It's downloading right here. And then let's do one for, I don't know, AKS, for example. And we'll, we'll do a little bit of a comparison. All right, so we got the one there, and then we'll open up the second one. So as you can see here, this is a pretty big report. You know, for example, you can see there's 271 pages here. So as you can see, though, the good thing is it tells you exactly where everything is if you're looking for something specific. So if we scroll down, we have some control plane components, the API server, the controller manager, etcd, the scheduler, the worker nodes. So there's a lot of stuff here. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it actually looks like. So if you take a look here, you can see that it's under recommendations. So if we go ahead and we look, we'll see the first recommendation here, master node configuration files. And essentially what it's gonna tell you is literally exactly what you need to do to fix this inside of your environment. It gives you the reason, the description, even the code to literally do it. So this is really, really cool. It's actually like a hands-on guide almost that's gonna tell you exactly what you should be doing. Here's another one, ensure that the API server pod specification file ownership is set to root. So as you can see here, it gives you the code that you need and all that. So again, this report isn't just like, a, oh, I'm reading it, I'm reading it, I'm reading it. It's actually like giving you solutions and options. So then if we open up the AKS benchmark and we scroll down here, we can see here that it's set up very similar, except remember, with using something like AKS, you don't have control over, for example, the control plane. So if we scroll down here, keep scrolling, keep scrolling. We can see that there are some control plane recommendations. So if we keep scrolling down here, we can see under logging, it'll tell you exactly what it is. So example, enable audit logs because they're not enabled by default in AKS. So it's gonna tell you why, the impact, and then how to actually do it. So as you can see, the control plane section was a little bit short and that obviously makes sense because there's literally not much you can do with it anyways because it's managed by Azure. But then we get down to, you know, the worker node section, and this is going to be a little bit bigger. This is going to actually, again, get into the solutions of what you can do. So it's going to give you the description, the rationale, the impact, and then the actual code to accomplish the task. So that's how you can get started with CIS benchmarks. I would highly recommend not tr attempting to memorize them because <laughs> these things are huge. 
but you can just go through, for example, if we scroll back up here really quick, you can go through the outline, right? And then you can look and you can say, oh, KMS, I want to make sure that I have that on or Oh, the CNI plugin want to make sure that I have that. So you don't have to read through the whole thing manually. You can literally just go here under the recommendations and see which ones you want to implement inside of your environment and you know, which ones you should implement from a best practices perspective.